Today we're going to work on for a warm up. We're gonna do some footwork, and uh, we're gonna do footwork in conjunction with some workout stuff. And the main thing we're doing is three step sprints. We're not gonna start off with them sprinty, uh, partially because we're gonna be warmed up and not pull a muscle, and partially because you wanna get the footwork very precise. So three step sprints mean you sprint exactly one, two, three steps. So we're just gonna go forward and back, forward back one two three and then we're going to mix up some other footwork and some exercises at various ends but again the basic is right left right right left right and we're just going to do 10 starting right leg back and then we'll go left do 10 on that side and then we're going to start sprinkling some stuff in so i'm ready go ahead one two three one two three and pause for a half a second at each end You want to end in fighting stance at each end. Sprinting is probably the most useful self-defense exercise you can do because generally your goal in self-defense is to get home safe and most self-defense situations can be handled by walking away or being aware of what's going on. But if it's not, running away and being able to outrun other people is probably next most helpful. Of course, there are situations where running isn't an option, but if it is an option, as long as you've got it on the table, you might as well make it something that you can do better than other people. Okay, so now, again, still getting warmed up, so we're gonna focus on footwork. We're gonna go one, two, three, belly side, side step. When I'm going to my left side, my left foot leads, so I'm not crossing my feet, and go back, one, two, three. One, two, three, now back side, side step, which is gonna be my front foot, because I don't wanna cross my feet. Front back, one, two, three. So again, right, left, right, left, right, right, left, right. Right, left, right, right, left, right, left, right. And we're gonna do five starting with your right leg back, five starting with your left leg back. When you go up, make sure you step to your belly side. It's kind of arbitrary, but that's what we're doing. And then three steps back, then three step forward, sprint to your, or side step to your back side, three step back. Okay, we're ready, go ahead. Each one, while you're running, you can just have your hands pumping like they normally would. But when you're at the end, when you're doing this shuffle, your hands come up in fighting stance. So as you get warmer, you can start speeding up, just gauge for yourself. I'm in a cold garage, so it's probably gonna take me a little bit longer if you're in a warm house. So speed up as your body feels comfortable doing it. Okay, 
Now we're gonna do three step sprint, one, two, three, switch, three step back. One, two, three in fighting stance, switch in fighting stance. This one will alternate and we're gonna do 10. So forward and back is one, by the way, not a full set back to starting with your right leg back again. Okay, I'm ready to go. Three, switch, one, two, three, one. Okay, good. Now we're gonna do, this is gonna be some fancier footwork. I'm gonna go one, two, three, slide back, step forward, one, two, three. One, two, three, slide goes the opposite direction, step back forward, one, two, three. And your goal here is to make the slide and step precise. So I go one, two, three, full stop for a fraction of a second. Slide back, still in a fighting stance, step, still in a fighting stance, one, two, three. As people start to speed it up, then the footwork starts to get messy. Remember, footwork is moving such that you're in fighting stance as much of the time as possible. So if you find your stance is getting sloppy, slow it down, that's more important than speed. Okay, so one, two, three, slide back, step forward. When you come back, you should be on the other side, 10 of these. I'm ready to go. Next one's gonna be the same thing, but instead of a step at the end, we're gonna do a reverse step. One, two, three, slide, reverse step, two, three. One, two, three, slide back, turn your back, walk forward, one, two, three. And same deal, I recommend starting slow and see if you can speed it up and keep speeding it up now that you're warmer. Keep speeding it up until you start to make mistakes, then slow down again. Okay, we ready to go. Okay, next, 
We're gonna take a break from footwork for a second. We'll come back to it. We're gonna work on cornering. So you're running away and there's a corner you get, need to get around. It doesn't matter if you use a door or you actually have a corner. All we're gonna do is we're gonna work on sprinting and going around a corner. So I'm gonna make, you can even set something out. Here's my corner. I'm gonna sprint. Sprint. So you're gonna take that corner as quickly as possible. One key is when I go around, I wanna get my outside foot planted so I can anchor off of that. Use that to push as I change direction. So it's like I'm do, starting a second sprint at the corner. So you should be able to go turning right and turning left. Um, we'll go back and forth. We'll do this 20 times in between um, 20 total. So you end up at this starting spot, one, two, three, four, or 10, ending up where you start. So start, get a good set, and then stop, get set again, and then stop. So each time you wanna go, you're standing, you're sprinting, you're sprinting, rest for a couple seconds, get set, sprint. Some of these you can get a sprinter's position, other ones you can just be walking, and there's a guy with a knife, and you just start sprinting. Okay, so on your own, 10, ready to go. and mix up which foot you start off with, or just be walking. So you have to time your footwork. Okay, now we're gonna go walking backwards a couple steps. So whatever the longest way you can use your space. This is the walking away, something's bad, and then it's really bad. So you transition from and going from that walking backwards to sprinting as quickly as you can. And again, 10 times ending up at your starting spot 10 times. Okay, we're ready to go. And try and not give away with your footwork what you're doing before you go. I notice I'm doing that, so try and make it you're just walking backwards and see, you might do the same thing every time. Maybe take a little bit bigger step and sink, but figure out what you can do to make that as smooth and fast as possible. Okay. Without having a tell what you're about to do.
Okay. Last set, then we're gonna go back to some footwork. We're gonna sprint and then we need to stop. So you're gonna pick a wall and you're gonna sprint at the wall. Let's see, I think this, you can see this wall. So I'm gonna sprint at the wall and then stop as close to the wall as you can. I do without crashing into it. Usually that's turning sideways, extending your foot like a spring. You might end up doing a couple double taps to avoid rolling over your ankle. And then you go the other way and sprint towards the other wall. So you're sprinting, car backs out, went around a corner and there was something right there, whatever. And again, 10 times ending back where you started. Ready to go. tired, dig deep, if you're running through life and you're this tired, you might have to keep running just a little bit longer than they do. Back to do some footwork a little bit. Then we're gonna do one more of these sprinting ones. And then we'll do some different stuff for the second half. Okay, so the footwork we did before, three step sprint, I go forward, here's an attack, I clear it, then I take a step, and that step can be a roundhouse kick, that step can be a punch, step can be slap, I don't care what, you're just gonna throw an attack, one, two, three. And start off slow like we did before. We're just gonna do five, starting where you ended. So again, one, two, three, stop, dodge out of the way, throw your attack as soon as you land. Okay, there was more than one of them, three steps back. And make sure on the three steps, even though you know you're only doing three, Still let your feet pass. It might be five, might be seven, might be 15. You don't know how many it is. So make sure they're full steps. Another note, whenever you're doing strikes in the air, as always, careful with the motion. When in doubt, make it looser or slower or don't throw the full extension. You can just throw the knee chamber or the knee motion or the arm motion. As long as your body is getting the feel for the body swinging into it, the hip moving, the shoulder moving, that's the most important part. And then from there, in the moment, you can throw something out. Okay. So when you're ready, go ahead. Means you're getting tired, focus more on the technique. Hands up, good fighting stance. Okay, the last one we did was a reverse step. One, two, three, slide. Two main options from here. Back kick, 
then run away, or slide, spinning hammer, one, two, three. So you can either decide in the moment what you're gonna throw, or before, before you go decide, but one, two, three, slide, spinning backwards one of those two attacks, then land it as quickly as possible so you can retreat. Okay, again, five per side, ending back where you started. Ready, go. Okay, last one we're gonna do, I'm just gonna do 10 times. You're gonna be on the ground. You're gonna go from being on the ground to sprinting as quickly as you can. So there's several different ways you can get up. And you wanna pick before which way you're gonna go so you don't crash anything. So maybe I'm going that way, I might do a sideways roll. Sprint. You might go backwards. Backwards roll. You might just do a regular self-defense stand. You might do figure four. So you're getting up forward. Your hands are gonna be super key to helping you get stable enough you can launch off. And just 10, whenever you go down, of course, do a break fall, then decide, okay, I'm going this way, stand up, sprint, reset. After they're done with that, then you got 10 times, take two. Let me sprint the first couple steps like we've been doing the three steps. It's one thing about a three step sprint. You're practicing getting those first three steps as fast as you can. That's the most important part because that's when you're in potential grabbing, kicking, punching, stabbing distance.
Okay, we're going to problem next is some basic defenses against punches. And I'm going to be the attacker. You'll be reacting to my punches as I do them. We're going to start off bobbing and weaving. So when I throw a punch, you want to go to the pinky side because there's another fist waiting on this side. So when I throw that, bob, and you want them to make the motion as small as possible that displaces your head. And if you can see your own camera, you can see. So I've got this line behind me in the garage. I want to move just enough that that line shows and then comes back. If you're going so big that you're dropping way down, it takes a long time to come back. So it's, it's going to be too big. So you want to make it a little bit at the hips, a little crunch, so a tiny bend of a lot of muscles instead of a big bend of one muscle. So I'm doing a little bit of a bow, a little bit of a bow at the mid chest, a little bit of a nod. So I'm gonna get small. So we'll start off, I'll just throw jabs and you'll bob. If you mess up the bob, okay, that's the wrong way. That's going to the thumb side instead of the pinky side. Thumb is bad, pinky's good. So you go to the thumb side. Again, if you can find a reference, figure out about where the fist is. Pick something behind you. Like Shay, if you have that light behind you, if that's where the fist is, if you look at your camera, if you put your right, put that light right behind your head, there's a, that nipple light in your kitchen. If you put your line up behind that, so you're, that's right behind your head. So move forward just a little bit. You move forward a little bit, yeah. So that's where my fist is going. And then you can see in the camera, you wanna move just enough that you expose that or duck under it. And Mike, you can do the same thing with the edge of that door frame. So get a reference point so you can see, you can use technology to help us. You can see how much you're moving to make the motion small instead of giant. Okay, so again, I'll start off nice and slow and telegraph it. Bob, if you mess up the bob, still do the bob. And then weave, if you change your mind, that's the deer in the headlights. Where, where do I go, where do I go? Oh, I get run over, that's what I do. Okay, so ready? Yeah, and if you can pick your hand up too, like Mike just did, that's an added bonus. A little closer. And generally, you wanna go with from hands down. That's the Krav Maga rule. It's easy to train with your hands up, but if your hands are down, you're training that quick reaction from not being ready. And again, I'll speed these up as I go. I'm gonna start off nice and slow. You can still go fast, speed is up to you. You wanna have the hand go across, so you're parrying. Just imagine you're in a dance club, night at the Roxbury stuff. Yeah, exactly. There you go. Yeah, Mike's got it. Okay, so boom. And I'll keep on speeding up until hopefully I'll get to the point where it's going to be just about impossible. And the goal of that is to show you pure defense doesn't work. Eventually, you're going to have to attack. Even if you're 99% effective, then you're going to get hit every hundredth punch. Actually, statistically, that's not how it works because it's 99.99 to the something power. And at about when that equals about 0.5, then you're probably going to get hit. And if you do mess up, that's okay, just reset. <laughs> yeah, right. Start nerd fighting. Yeah, exactly. Okay, cool. Now, next, we're gonna go to side attacks. So these are swings. And there's two main options. One is the cover, which is kind of the default. The other is the cover and weave. Even if you're covering, or even if you're weaving, you still want to cover at least some degree in case you were wrong or they, you went soon enough that they can track it to some degree. And again, you want to make that motion small. So again, whatever your reference point is, you want to make sure duck out away from your reference point and then reset if you're weaving. 
and covers work just as well. The downside of a cover of yours is you're getting hit. The plus side of it is it doesn't take you off line, so you can attack at the same time, whereas the weave, you can attack on the way up, but generally it's kind of hard to, I mean, there are some exceptions, but it's harder to counterattack while you're weaving, and it displaces you, so the next attack, it's gonna take you all this time to reset. So, again, all I'll just do is I'll do some sort of swing from the side, and you can either cover or weave, whichever way you're going. So here, nice and slow. And a note when you cover, you wanna make sure that this is tight against the side of your head. If there's a gap, then their energy is gonna to transfer to your arm into your head. And if you have it anchored on your head, then your neck and your upper body can help absorb it. So all of those muscles work together versus just using your arm to resist. And if that fails, then it transfers this way. When I was in college, I was doing karate and my roommate were sparring and he threw a hook punch and I blocked it this way. He punched me in the elbow, my elbow whipped around and somehow gave me a black eye. I don't even flexible enough to do that, but. Somehow, I got a black eye from him punching me in the arm. So when you do go against your head, you want no daylight. There's no room to squeeze, and you want to be protecting, if possible, the back of your head in case it hooks around. Or maybe you went to the wrong side and it hooks around, so you've got to protect it. Okay, we'll go keep on getting faster. And again, if you get hit, don't worry about it. Just reset. It's one of the most important skills, in fact, I found doing defensive boxing training is... Being able to not let getting hit once mean you get hit two or three times. So a lot of time your mind will freeze up and go, well, you screwed up. And then you get hit by the next two while your brain's still recovering from you messing up that one. It's interesting, I can tell the latency between Mike being in the same town and Shay being a couple states away. A little bit of lag. And again, I'll start speeding up. And try and reset back to your starting point each time. One thing you can use, if you have that reference point, you can see if you're back in your spot. And if you're actually in a fight, you're gonna be moving around, but for the purpose of this drill, just so we can see if we're getting all the way back to reset, find that reference point. Go a little bit faster. Okay, next we're gonna go to the next one, we'll call it a shell, because you're in your turtle, already in a turtle fighting stance with your shoulders raised up a little bit and your head tipped down. Now we're gonna close up the shell, so we're looking out of the shell, and I'm putting my knuckles on my forehead, so if I get hit in the hand, again, there's something solid there so I don't get hit, and then my knuckles hit me, especially if they're angling down, it brings my arm down, and I punch myself in the eye, so it's on my forehead. If I get hit, sure, it's gonna transfer. It'd be better if I had boxing gloves, but I'm not gonna have boxing gloves. So this is gonna be unpleasant, but it's gonna be less than them punching my hand into me. Okay, now from here, you can still bob, but not as well. So we're gonna not bob. Instead, when the punch comes in, you're just gonna close the door. So you can still see, ideally from this, you can still see pretty much perfectly fine. There's a reason you don't shield. Shield be a little bit more protection from the front, but it's less from the side and now you can't see. So shell good, shield bad, but you can close it and now there isn't room to punch. And if they throw the punch, they're gonna have to try and squeeze in through that gap. And if they punch you in the elbow, they're probably either gonna roll their wrist or mash their knuckles. So it's kind of like getting punched in the top of the head. Here they have a choice of punching me in the top of the head or in the elbow. So it's probably bad news for them. And then, right now we'll just work on that briefly, but this is pretty quick and obvious. Then we'll go 
I can throw some straight punches or I can swing. And if it comes from the side, you can quickly open that up and slide it down and then bring it back. So from the front, it'd be closed. From the sides, it'll come around. So this is really good defense. Okay, so you're here in your shell. Chin is tucked down, knuckles on, and oh, I said I wasn't gonna do that, but let's just jump straight into that. So if I punch straight, you're gonna close the door. It doesn't really matter which elbow, you can always do the same one or whatever. As long as you're not turning too much, you don't wanna do this, because then you're just exposing what they're aiming for. If I swing, cover, just bring that one up, all the way back on the back of your head, protecting the occiput, the back of your skull, and then reset it as soon as it's clear. So same thing on this side, swing it up, and then bring it back as soon as the strike's clear. And the resetting is important because if you don't reset fast enough, sure you got rid of one, but then there's another one gonna be there and the punches can come really fast. Fortunately, most people aren't trained in how to make the punches come fast, but even then, they're still, if their arms are just swinging wildly, it still can be pretty quick. A couple punches a second sometimes. And again, I'll just keep speeding up. Okay, if I go to a front cover, I'm opening my hands. The front cover is not as good as a shell, except in one respect. I can attack or intercept better from here. So this is where I'm not planning on sticking around here. This is, I'm, I need to just, there's just a bunch of attacks. Maybe multiple people are punching and I'm just trying to cover and protect until I can, you know, kick someone. That's because if my hands are up busy, then that's my main weapon. Whenever we're doing multi-attack, that's one of the things we go to is your hands are busy, they're grabbing you, then you use your hips and kicks and stomps and things. So anyway, your hands are open, not quite as defensive, but then you can do something called an intercept. So when we do a big haymaker swing, you're gonna intercept shooting your hand out, driving in, aiming elbow plus or minus, boom. And you wanna drive into it to jam it up, and as you do that, the other one is going to protect your head because if they're throwing a haymaker on this side, you can be pretty sure they're going to be throwing a haymaker on the other side next, or at least they're going to be attacking with the other side. So when the attack comes, you're going to drive into the arm. So say they're punching on this side of my head, it's coming around this way. I'm going to cover, shoot forward. My arm is not completely locked. I want a little bit of a bend, so I have this nice solid structure. It's the, the positions of power, there's 170 degrees there's 100 degrees and there's like, whatever, however cute you can make it, 20 degrees. And those are strong. Locked out is vulnerable. Between here is pretty good, but about 100 degrees, 90 degrees isn't quite as strong as 100 degrees. That's why when you pick heavy stuff up, you pick it up at that angle and then this is strong. So when you're intercepting, you want that 170 degree and then this one's at the acute. So I've got two strong angles jamming in and then resetting back to hands open. You can set your fingers on your forehead so there's some connection, but not closed fists, because I want this time. Okay, so again, what I'll do is I'll just swing, whichever side is coming in, lunge forward, jam that side and cover on the other one, and then reset. So nice and slow, jam and cover. And whichever side it's coming on, if it's coming on your right side, so it's coming around this side, you wanna jam with that hand, and then the next one will come on this side. So this would be a right hand jams it, left hand cover, same thing on the other side, and then reset. Boom. And I'm gonna go slower with these, because on these you'd be driving in in the hopes of preventing there being more than one or two of these. Okay, 
So that's quickly intercepts. And after that, you would be close enough, hopefully, that they couldn't punch. Most people, when these people start throwing big punches, then they instinctively just kind of back up. But most people, when they punch, they instinctively move forward. And so if you're backing up just as they're moving forward, you're just staying perfectly in that da most dangerous range at arm's straight length. So I want to either get, do what we did before, sprint, or move out to kicking range and kick them in the knees to keep them from getting into range. Or I want to rush in and get through that range as quickly as possible. Because out here, that is where people get knocked out. It can happen here, rarely happens out there. But so I want to get through there. Okay. So real quick, what we're going to do is we're going to do a mix of, you can be in front cover or boxing cover or just regular fighting stance or even start with your hands down if you want to really go for it. And I'll start super slow. And then whatever I throw, you're going to defend against it. You can parry. You can do uh, close the door. If I swing, you can cover, cover and weave or intercept and cover the other side. And also go nice and slow so you just have a target to play around with and whatever you want to do. Again, giving you big telegraphed motions. Slowly keep speeding it up. As I speed it up, you might want to go towards a shell position because it's a little bit better, has a little bit better general protectiveness and it makes, bobs are probably better. In most cases they will be, but. Okay, cool. So there's the basics. Um, Mike, we just worked on intercepts real quick. So if I was swinging with this arm, you'd lunge in with that one, cover with the other. We ran through that and then just kind of integrated everything together. Okay, so to finish up, got a little bit of time left. Um, I wanted to work on, go back to standing up. Um, I don't know if we've done this in an adult class recently, so or at noon class. So I thought we'd do it real quick. And we're just gonna do everything a couple times because there's a bunch of effective ways of standing up. There's a bunch of less effective ways up. There's some really cool ways of standing up. I'm just gonna do a little bit of everything to finish up. Then we do some stretching at the very end. So basic way of standing, self-defense stand. And that is two hands down, hips up, hop backwards, come up in a fighting stance. Okay. So just do that one a couple times. We'll do each one about twice. Okay, then you can do the same thing one-handed. Uh, one plus side about one-handed is I can just put my hand where I wanna go. So if I wanna go straight back, I can put it over there. But if I wanna go this way, then when I move my hand there, I can change my angle a little bit more. Downside, it's not quite as stable. So I might mess it up. So I could be leaning back here, but then there's a guy over there. I just put my hand over there, put my weight down and hop up a different direction. Okay, so I do that a couple of times. And you can just do these as I, as I go through them. Okay, next, uh, going backwards, backward roll to stand. So this is, they're close and I need to really stand up or I just fell backwards and I'm practicing the getting up after I fell backwards so I get to my feet quickly. So all you're gonna do is a backward roll going over your shoulder and then I wanna make sure to make sure I stand quickly, I want this one raising the roof. So when I go over, this one's already on the ground so I can push off of it and get up quickly. So again, as I go down, I'm going over one shoulder and the other hand is raising the roof. I'll get, so this one is featured. So as I go over, this one pushes into the ground after I roll over. So as I'm on the way up, it's there to help stabilize. And as I come up, it pushes into the ground to help spring me up. Right. 
OK. Let's so that one, one more time. So backward roll to stand. Yep. OK, so from there, yeah, figure four, just make a four that's upside down. I'm going to put this leg and this foot on the ground. You can get up on both feet. Downside is if this surface is not solid, it's less stable, and it's really hard on your knees if you're older. So I'm going to go on the edge of this knee and this foot, rock up. The main thing is this hinge. I just need to get enough momentum to get my hips over that. And once you're here, it's just tucking your toes under and then pivoting it up. And generally, you get up facing the direction you got up from, because presumably you're getting away from the bad stuff. So again, I've got my four. I'm going to throw the straight one over the bent one. This one's like a hinge that I rock over. I'm just rocking up to kneeling once I'm there. Dig the toes in, stand face the other way. OK. And then from there, you want some more room on this one. If I get up and there's something behind me or I need to go under something, like I start to get up here and they're right there, but I still need more room, I decided I need to get up. If they're really close to me, usually the best option is to just not get up and go to monkey feet. There are situations where that's not true, however, like they weigh twice as much as me and I don't want to fight them on the ground, or they've got friends, or they might have friends, or they've got a knife. <clears throat> so I want to get up. As soon as I get up to kneeling, I'm going to stay low. So I'm going to tuck this forward roll as small as possible, push forward, and then out of the forward roll, you just roll up to your feet. So I'm going to do that figure four. And when I come up, I'm tucked down low and then roll up to the feet. And again, facing back where you got came from, because presumably that's where the bad stuff is. I might be facing that way because I'm sprinting, but generally you want to be facing the thing you're getting up away from. So I'll try that a couple times. Maybe one time try, if you have room, try a, all that and do a quick Come up on your sprinting, just one step. Takes more room than I thought. Okay. So that's figure four to forward roll. Then there's getting up to the left, getting up to the right. Basics of side stand. I'm going to glue my elbow to my thigh. I call it dead bug. You have half a dead bug. Throw the straight side over the bent side. And again, this is my, the shin is the hinge. That's the key to getting up. I go over. I want this to be wide. If my hand foot come apart, I'm going to tend to just roll over again. So I want to have them close together. I want to throw them far. If my feet are close together, this is going to be less stable when I get up. So I want it to be wide. So I come up in fighting stance or running away stance. So I'll try that on both sides. Tuck one, throw the straight one over it. Okay, to make it more advanced, you throw the straight one out, so you reverse it. Normally, I would go strength straight over bent, but I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to throw straight and then tuck it to help pop up. So that's next step of speeding it up. Try that a couple times. So that's what figure skaters do to speed up. They're throwing it out, and they tuck it in to speed up the spin. We're doing the same thing. The next thing I can do to speed it up has to do with the arm and leg that are underneath, mostly the arm. I can use this arm like we did for a backward roll for a spring. I go here, and once I'm here, my elbow's on the ground, I'm gonna kind of roll up that hand to help launch up off the ground. So now I'm gonna throw it straight, tuck it, and then use that arm to push up. I want to feel like I'm almost bouncing, like it launches me up enough that it feels like I'm almost bouncing off the ground a little bit, curling up that hand. So my arm, this arm underneath is a spring. When I get to here, as I'm coming over this elbow, I push into the ground with the elbow, boom, all the way up. So that right there, boom, that motion is as fast as you can make it to help pop up. Okay. Next. Kick, tuck, kick. On this one, all I'm going to do, and this is essentially what we're doing with the sideways stand. So once you have that, you can do the same thing. And if you do it without your legs, then you're just doing kick, tuck, kick. So I throw. This is kicking. Then I'm going to tuck it. I'm going to kick. 
And this is where I talked about the shin being the key and the knee. If you can get to this position, then you can get up from here, just popping up. So now all I have to do is kick my foot any direction. Maybe I want to get up 45 degrees that way. I throw my leg that way. At the last second, I tuck it and kick the other one over. And as long as you can get that knee over shin kneeling position, then you can get up. And so I can go any direction, whatever way you want to go. If I want to go to the right, mostly, I'm going to throw my right leg. If I want to go to the left, I'm going to throw my left leg. If I'm going straight forward, I can throw either. But generally, it's helpful uh, to get a little bit of an angle. I can even go straight the opposite direction just by turning a little bit and then kick. Okay. Next. If I'm here in this self-defense position, um, if I want to go another way of getting up, so before we did self-defense stand where I go this way, I can get up another way where I don't have to turn my back. So when I do this, I'm turning my back to him. I can get up without turning my back by instead of thinking of putting my hands down and then going back, I can pick up here and then kick this one behind me. So I'm leaning here. I go to this three-pointed bear crawl position and then push back and then I can stand up that way. So I'm in crab work position, pick up one arm, whichever arm you pick up, the opposite leg is going to kick under. And if you do it right, you can stay more upright on the way up. You're still going to have your belly down, but it's a little bit easier. Okay. Now, uh, some of these next ones are somewhat effective. Some of them are not. Um, next one is instead of kicking my leg under, I'm gonna, whichever hand I raise, I'm gonna kick that one over. So essentially, I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna kick this foot over and then come up. So it changes the angle. So I'm gonna pick up the same hand and foot, kick that leg over the top, boom, and come up. On its own, that isn't super practical, but if I do it faster, then not only does it start to look cool, but it actually gets me up pretty quick. So I'm just gonna kick this one now, not just step with it. I wanna kick it over and tuck the other one right, right as or right before it lands. <clears throat> I'll try and exaggerate that. So kicking a leg up and then tucking the other one after it. <clears throat> Yeah, okay. Now, to make that a little more acrobatic and maybe, maybe a little bit less practical, I'm going to start already in this position here, and I'm going to think of kicking both feet sideways. So I'm going to kick both feet up off to the side. And again, this can be quick. Maybe it can be effective. Probably not as effective, probably not as safe as that last one because my feet are going to tend to land closer together, but it is a little bit faster. So just kick both feet at the same time or one just slightly after the other. Just think of throwing your feet that way and just see, I'm going to throw both legs that way. Yeah. And then as they come down, you might kick them a little bit wider. Okay, next one, uh, I did not get immediately. You may or may not be able to get this one. Uh, I don't know if I'll be able to get it. I can only get it on one side, but it's called a backwards Mikao, if I can still do it. And now you're gonna do the same thing. We're trying to kick more overhead. Instead of kicking to the side, you're kicking both feet up. And this gets much less practical, but much cooler. So you're pretty much doing the same thing. And how I got to it is I went from kicking to the side and I just kicked more up at an angle until eventually I was like, okay, kicking this way, kicking this way. And throwing the other arm up, kind of like a back handspring, can kind of help throwing that up and then kicking. And if you don't want to try it, that's okay. I just, I did a ton of these side ones. These are called Mikaos. I did a ton of side ones before I got up to that. Okay, 
last way of getting up completely not practical yeah that was good mike completely not practical for um any sort of self-defense thing but looks pretty cool so this is the cross-legged rise all i'm gonna do is gonna push my feet into the ground and it's especially good if i want to go that way because all i do is push down and if i untwist my feet then it's pretty easy to walk off the other direction and it looks cool because you don't need your hands so this is how i like if i'm eat, sitting in a park eating or something then you can just be like eating you know in your hands and you can get up if i want to go forwards if i want to go forwards i do the same thing but i have to add a little bit of a, a heel spin so when i come up here i just kick that foot out the way i want to go it's hard to do slow um, but whichever foot is crossed in front that is the anchor one and the other one for me at least is the free one so if i want to go forward come up and push off that one so i'm walking forward and this is when i was in competing in forms that's how i'd always get up okay no oh, time flies when you're having fun so that's what i have time for there's a couple other ways of standing up um, that we don't have time for but that's most of them and especially the cool ones so anyway we're out of time but with me, cheerio, good night.